Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for your attendance. Okay, so we are back to uh, lecture. Right, oh, wait, before that. Okay, so previously, um, we have discussed about introduction to fermentation. Um, and the second one, you read by yourself the media formulation optimization. Uh, in the third lecture, we talk about uh, biorectors, right? Uh, and LU4 is about plant and animal cell biorectors. So we are in the middle of the course, yeah? Um, LU4. So altogether, we have eight LUs. So LU4 is about plant and animal cell biorectors. So previously, what we have discussed in LU3, we talk about design and features of uh, biorectors, eh? but most of the aspects that we discuss, uh, it focuses on more. It, it focuses more on uh, stirred time biorectors, and stirred time biorectors are widely used for microorganisms. So when I say microorganisms, by right you should know it refers to bacteria, yeast, and fungi. Okay. Um. Okay, but fermentation, if you see like cultivation of the uh, animal uh, of cells, cultures, it also involves uh, not just microorganisms, but also plant cells and animal cells. But plant and animal cells, they are not microorganisms, right? Because they are higher organisms. Um, they, they are much bigger compared to uh, bacteria, yeast, and fungi, okay? So bacteria is the smallest, yeast is the second smallest, yeah? Fungi is the largest microorganisms. And then uh, we have this plant and animal cell biorectors, which are much bigger. Okay, so in this LU, in this topic, we are going to see what are the requirements uh, for cultivating animal and plant cells. Okay, so you see the plant... Uh, Cells here is like uh, related to plant biotech. Huh? Animal refers to animal biotech. So in biotech, there are many niche areas. Yeah, some of you are in, for your FYP are working with microorganisms, bacteria, yeast, fungi. Some of you uh, take projects under plant biotech. Yeah, like if you join uh, the host team, uh, perhaps the Hyro, some of the projects on the plant. Yes. And for animal biotech or animal cells, uh, those who are under Dr. Chu, Dr. Uh, Lee Kuisu, yeah? So you guys are working under animal cells. So perhaps some of the information you might apply for your FYP, some of the basic knowledge, yeah? you should know the requirement, the characteristics of uh, the cells yeah? before you grow them, okay? Right, so these are the subtopics that we are going to discuss in the this interview. First, we are going to talk about uh, plant cells, yeah, characteristics of plant cell suspension, problems with uh, plant cell biorectors, and operation of plant cell biorectors. Uh, animal cells. Um, doctor. Yes. It is still um attending. Oh, okay. This screen. Right, right. Thank you for. Uh, noticing it very early. Wait, I need to sh stop sharing the attendance. Okay, so if you haven't seen the first slide, eh? this is the first slide. Our topic is about plant and animal cell biorectors for today. So this is the subtopics. Uh, first, we're going to cover plant cells. And the second one will be animal cells. So these are the subtopics, right? Um, so for animal cells, we're going to cover all this stuff, animal cell cultures, the types of rectors, designs of animal cell rectors, attached growth system, uh, suspended growth system, and uh, problems in animal cell cultures. Okay, so those are the subtopics for today's uh, lecture. Okay, 
So the reason why um, there is a difference, why uh, microorganisms, uh, microbial fermentations are discussed uh, differently, like the, the requirement for the biorectors from plant and animal cell uh, biorectors is because uh, there is a difference, right? First, the, the biggest difference is plant and animal cells are not microorganisms. Bacteria, yeast, fungi, they are microorganisms. So having said that, if you see, this is just a comparison between um, S3. Comparison between uh, bacterial cell, plant cell suspension, and plant cell uh, plant cell suspension, bacterial cells, and animal cells. Okay, so this is the comparison. I don't have the yeast and fungal here, but perhaps um, you can imagine that yeast and fungi, they are in between this stuff because this, the uh, yeast is much bigger than bacteria. Fungi are much bigger than yeast. Okay, so the order is bacteria, yeast, fungi in terms of the size from the smallest to the uh, biggest for the microorganisms. So you can see that uh, because of the differences in terms of certain characteristics between microorganisms and animal and plant cells, so that make uh, the requirement for the cultivation because the reason why we are talking about biorector, we are talking about cultivating the plant cells and animal cells. Remember the definition of fermentation is about growing the cells, right? Growing the cells in a platform. You give the media, which is food, under certain conditions, cultural conditions. Culture conditions means what is the pH, the temperature, the oxygen, if they need oxygen, uh, the media concentration, right? Uh, what else? The agitation, mixing things. So these, those are the condition, the environment inside the platform. And, uh, and most importantly is why you want to cultivate these cells, bacterial cells, yeast cells, plant cells, animal cells. You are growing them in the lab. Yeah, you are providing artificial environment because um, in the lab, they are not, uh, you know, they are, those environments are artificial to them. Yeah. Uh, because we want to harvest something from them, right? We want to get certain types of products. Yeah? Uh, so perhaps certain bacteria, they have been genetically modified to express certain uh, proteins of interest. So at the end of the fermentation, we want to get that sort of proteins. When I say protein, it, it is very general. Uh, products, it can be, and because the products normally, the, the things produced by all the cells, they uh, consist of, they are, they are made of protein. Okay, so that's why I said protein, but it's a product like product interest. Uh, so you want to get those products. There are many products produced by uh, different types of cells. Yeah, that that is the contribution of biotech. Yeah, there are enzymes, there are vaccines, there are biofuel, uh, food even. Yeah, food can be produced by fermentation. So I just want to you guys to recall why we are talking about cultivating cells. Yeah? Um, in this lecture, in this course, it's not just this topic. Yeah, we talk about fermentation since the first LU. So anything after that is all about fermentation. Why? What is the platform, the media, and so on? Yeah? So the reason why there is a difference uh, in terms of the platform. Now we're talking about platform, right? Uh, for cultivating animal cells and plant cells is because of they have different characteristics. They have different requirements, of course. Yeah. For example, if you are talking about different kids, eh? kids and uh, adult, of course they have different uh, different requirements of nutrients eh? because of their activities are different. So the same thing goes to uh, different organisms uh, like microorganisms and animal and plant cells. Eh? So these are the comparison. In terms of size, you can see that um, bacteria has the smallest size. That is between two to 10 micrometer so micrometer is what? 10 to the power of? What is the size of micrometer? 10 to the power of? Micro. This is micro, right? I hope you guys know the symbol. This micrometer is called micro. The symbol is called micro. What is the size? 
So if you see here, 2 to the 10 of upper, you should, you should relate this. 1,000. Are you sure? 1,000 is milli then. This one is what? 10 times 10 to the power negative 6. Okay, correct. Okay, thanks. Uh, 10 to the power of minus 6. So if you see the ruler that you have, right, thank you for the answers. Uh, the ruler is only, it gives you like, uh, let me see the ruler. If you have your ruler with you, you can see that it's uh, CM, kan? CM is 10 to the power of minus 2. The most is, I think, milli there is. So you can see it's very close, even centi. Centi is uh, 10, minus, 10 to the power of minus 2. So you, you just imagine how uh, how small it is if it is 10 to the power of minus 6, even 10 to the power of minus 3. The, the kecil, kan? So 10 to the power of minus 6. That's why you cannot see it with naked eye, the bacteria. So you can see the size is uh, very small, yeah? 2 to the power of 10, uh, two, uh, sorry, 2 to 10 to the uh, micrometer. Uh, for animal cell, animal and plant cell, animal is much, animal is much smaller. Plant cell is the biggest one. I mean, it should sit actually uh, at the most right. Huh? So the second biggest here is, in, in this case, is animal cell. But if you have the, Yeast and fungi, it sits uh, after the bacteria, okay? Uh, for the animal cell, is between 5 to 100 micrometer, yeah, which is much smaller than plant. A plant is much bigger, like 10 to the 10 to 200 micrometer. So that is a comparison in terms of the size between bacteria, animal, and plant cell. So having said that, you can see that that's enough to show how different they are, actually. And of course, when the size is different, everything inside organelles is also different. Yeah, the plant cells and an animal cells they have more complex. They are they have more organelles. Organelles are the things inside the cells, right? I hope you guys study in cell biology. Um, so the plant cells have more more components, and uh, compared to just bacteria, which is small, right? So meaning to say that there are many things that you need to consider when you grow the plant cells or when you grow the animal cells, okay? Uh, in terms of individual cells, bacterial cells are often, what is meant here is like uh, the bacterial cells, if you grow it in a suspension, it present individually, like, you know, it's like single cells. I mean, yeah, so that is individual cells are more often in bacterial uh, cell cultures. But for the plant cell and animal cells, they generally aggregate. Aggregate means they form a cluster, a uh, club. Yeah? Uh, so they, they generally aggregate uh, up to two millimeter in size for the, the size of the aggregate, the diameter. Yeah? Uh, and also same for animal cell suspension, mostly aggregate and is encouraged depend, uh, dependent. Okay, And then in terms of the growth rate, uh, the shortest or the shortest growth rate is bacteria. Uh, within one or two hours, it doubles already. So from one becomes two, two becomes four, and so on. So that's how it grows more and more. Yeah? Um, and it just takes like very short time yeah, to double. Uh, and that's why um, what uh, I think I've mentioned before, right? So what makes, what's a uh, what differentiates uh, growth profile? When I say growth profile, yeah. can you see my scribbles? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't have any empty space Let's see it here, right? Let's put a green in. Okay, if you see the growth profile, okay, let me uh, start on the new slide. Uh, 
hold on, hold on. Uh, I try to make a new slide. Okay, guys, uh, I'm talking about the cell growth that you can. Okay, so, so just now I mentioned that the bacteria has the shortest doubling time. Uh, the second one is animal cells and the longest one is plant. So what does it mean actually? So, you know, the growth profile. How many phases are there in a growth profile? What is growth profile? Four. Okay. okay. Can you name the phase? It's very important for you to revise this thing in order to understand what I'm four phases. Okay. So what are those phases? How it looks like? Like, okay, first like have, phase. Yeah, like phase. Then first to other. What they call exponential. it? Exponential. Exponential or log phase. Yeah, there are two names for it. And then after that, stationary, <laughs> yes, you're right, stationary, and that finally is Daken. Okay, so this is a cell growth profile in general, meaning to say that bacteria, regardless of the type of the organism, bacteria, yeast, fungi, animal cell, plant cells, they have this type of uh, trend. They have this type of growth profile, okay? But what differs from bacteria, uh, yeast, and fungi is in terms of the time. So what does this? This is actually time. Eh? Time. Uh, it can be. You can plot it. Depends on what type of organism. If you plot uh, for animal and plant cells, normally we uh, we use day, right? Uh, and for uh, microorganisms, normally we use hour, because they just happen in hour. It doesn't uh, happen in day. Eh? Uh, okay, so it, uh, the unit is depends on the mineral organism. Uh, so for the bacteria just now, uh, the doubling time is about, it depends on the type of bacteria, but normally it's about one to two hours. Yeah. Uh, so it means that uh, once you start growing it, once you give the bacteria media and you put it in their optimal environment, yeah, depending on the, their temperature, so they will start growing, right? So they will start growing. So if let's say uh, bacteria, if for bacteria, uh, meaning to say that they just take maybe one hour to familiarize. Lag phase is when the bacteria or when the organism uh, try to adapt with the environment. Uh, like if let's say you are put in a new, uh, in a room with new people, okay? you take some time to get to know each other. You, you try to, you, you try to familiarize yourself with the environment. So it takes time for you to, be yourself, maybe. Okay, so for the organisms, it's also the same for the uh, bacteria, all these uh, living things. So it takes time for them to adapt with the environment. So that is lag phase. Uh, so by after uh, one hour, uh, they already familiar with the media. Yeah? They try to multiply, start to multiply. So that is when they try, uh, they will start doubling, right? So that is when the log phase happens, right? The exponential phase. So it means that they double. They double from 1 to 2 to 2 to 4, 4 to 8, uh, 8 to 16, and so on. Okay. Uh, so for the bacteria, it just takes about maybe they reach the log phase here or exponential phase here. Maybe like um, it depends on the what type of bacteria, but normally it's less than uh, 10 hours. Maybe like uh, when from here to when from here to here is about maybe four hours. Okay. Four hours to um, maybe eight hours. Yeah. Uh, data double. Okay. So after that, uh, it becomes stationary. Stationary is when uh, the dead cells and the uh, new cells, the number is equal. So there is no change. There is no difference. So that's why they are they reach stationary phase. So up to here, maybe it's already like after 10 hours, after uh, maybe around here, maybe even 14 hours, like that, okay? Nicely. 
And then after 14 hours or maybe 16 hours or 15 hours, the cells uh, start to die. So this phase is when the number of the dead cells is more than the number of new cells. So that's why uh, the growth is decreasing. Yeah? So that is for bacteria. It's only within 24 hours, basically, in general. Yeah? Uh, it might vary slightly from one type of bacteria to another, from, let's say, E. coli to bacillus subtilis to uh, lactobacillus. Yeah? It, it differs. It is that's not exactly similar, but it's actually within, like, 24 hours in general, the whole process here. Uh, but for uh, yeast and fungi, you can expect it's a little bit more. Let's say here for bacteria, the four to eight hours for the log phase. For the yeast and fungi, it takes longer, but not too long, but not too uh, too different from me, like maybe like between uh, eight hours to 16 hours. I don't know, it depends on the type of yeast as well. Okay, or maybe 24 hours for the log phase. And then after that, it's like stationary. And this one is about after maybe 48 hours, more the four years. Eh? For 48 hours, more the uh, growth in uh, that phase. And for the fungi, it's longer. Because if you see the size of the organism is increasing. So the bigger the size, the more it takes to grow. Okay, And actually, this the duration will be longer. Okay, For the fungi, uh, it might take like maybe it depends on the fungi as well. Like uh, aspergillus, I have an experience with aspergillus flavus. It takes like up to twenty one days to reach the death phase. Twenty one days, not twenty one hours. Twenty one days. Maybe uh, I'm talking about hours for the bacteria. Okay, so you can see the big difference. Huh? But actually, but still, uh, they exhibit all the phases: uh, the leg phase, log phase, uh, stationary end death phase uh, and that is for fungi uh, for animal cells the so after fungi is animal young in terms of the size so animal cells might take longer maybe a month i don't know uh, i have no experience with animal cell culture but i know that it's, it takes longer than fungi uh, maybe like after 30 days yeah, or maybe after 40 days i don't know it depends on the strain as well okay, 40 days baru dia reach the death phase uh, for the Plant cells, it takes longer than that. Maybe more, than, maybe about the same, but maybe much longer. Maybe more, but obviously like more than one month for it to complete the death phase. Okay, so that is the biggest difference um, in terms of the growth profile between one organism to another. That is the duration, masa the ambit to to complete all the phases. The how the growth, uh, if let's say they grow well, this is considering um, the cells are growing well. Uh, if they are contaminated, that is another story. They will not have these phases, okay? Uh, so it's very important for you to know the, the significance of this growth profile, and how it applies. Yeah? Uh, uh, so, so that is the need. So I'm, I'm stressing on the difference in terms of the duration between one organism to another, okay? And it depends actually on the doubling time to okay. okay, so it depends on the doubling time just now. So you can see here, right? Uh, so it, uh, the doubling time, it, it will influence the, the growth profile, the duration of the cultivation, okay? Uh, okay, back to this slide. Uh, inoculation density. So what is meant by inoculation? inoculation density. So you guys uh, perhaps uh, by right know that before we start fermentation, uh, because fermentation is like when you put the, whatever the organisms inside and you keep the media, but that organisms, uh, regardless of whether it's bacteria, yeast or fungi or animal cells or plant cells, they must have, uh, when, you're, you, when you're working in the lab, they must be the stock culture. The stock culture means like the origin, um, the, the the stock of the those organisms yeah? where you take it and then you must have like certain amount of stock culture in the freezer yeah? uh, and normally it's not just the normal freezer it's minus 80 degrees because uh, you want to keep the stock for a long time yeah? for a long period maybe like one year or maybe two years yeah so that's what you need like uh lower than the normal freezer temperature so once you get 
the stock culture from the freezer and you have to grow it. Uh, you have to prepare the inoculum. Or we call it inoculum or seed culture. It's the same thing. Uh, inoculum, seed culture. I think that's the, the, the names uh, normally used. So you have to prepare the inoculum uh, or seed culture first before you go into the fermentation, the real fermentation. So the reason why is because you get the stock culture from the freezer. Uh, they are not active. The, the, the organisms, the stock cultures, eh? the cultures are not yet active because they are in low temperature. So they are viable, but they are not yet active. So in order for you to make them active, at whatever the temperature that you want to cultivate your organism, let's say the room temperature. So you have to grow it first. A grow, I mean, you have to prepare the, what we call inoculum or seed culture, okay? So that is actually already a fermentation process. Uh, tapi is not yet the actual fermentation that where you want to harvest the products. Yeah? So the inoculum uh, and also the seed culture, when you grow them, you want to get more cells for you to start your fermentation later. So I hope you understand this. Huh? So that is the concept of uh, inoculum and seed culture. So normally it depends for bacteria. Um, for E. coli, uh, we grow the inoculum for 12 hours, uh, for 15 hours. It depends on the organism as well. Huh? Uh, so after that, you use the inoculum, you check first whether it grows. So how to know is like, it depends on how you measure the growth, it can be by measuring the absorbance or the optical density, right? After 12 hours, if there is a reading, a promising reading, then you know that the cells are growing. If not, you have to revive new stock cultures. Yeah? So the that step is very important because that will determine whether or not your fermentation process happened successfully. Okay, uh, so uh, inoculum, uh, density, it means that how much amount or concentration that you put into the fermentation. So once you have the inoculum culture, uh, normally for microbial, for bacteria, uh, they have different bacteria, uh, different, sorry, different organisms have different um, benchmark or standard concentration that uh, we can use for starting the fermentation. For the bacteria, for E. coli, maybe like um, after 15 hours, you have to make sure that it has a certain level of absorbance. Yeah, For example, like maybe 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. So you know that the cells are growing. So you can use um, the inoculum for fermentation. Okay. okay, so that is the density, the amount uh, needed, uh, the amount of the inoculum that you need in order to start your fermentation. Uh, or also, it, it also called starter. If let's say, uh, starter inoculum seed culture is the same thing. It's something to start your fermentation. That's why it's called starter. So if you are baking, uh, uh, if you are doing like a any roti and bread, you need starter, right? Baker's yeast again. If you are doing the normal bread, uh, you are baking the normal bread. That is called starter. The the yeast again. Uh, that is starter. Like you have to. Have it. Uh, you have to grow it first. Eh? Uh, so inoculation density is the amount of the inoculum needed to start the cultivation. Okay, for bacteria is considered low. Uh, normally it's ten percent. Uh, tapi it depends again with the type of the uh, the type of the organism. Okay, but in general the amount needed is low. Okay, density is the amount needed lah uh, For animal cell suspension is low as well. And for plant cell suspension is high, at least 10%, at least 10% of the working volume. Okay, so if let's say uh, the working volume for the plant cell is one liter, you know what is working volume? It's the amount, the volume of the culture that you are working with. Uh, it must be less than the total volume of the platform. The total volume of the platform is, let's say the shake glass is 500 uh, milliliter, the total volume. So your working volume must be less than that. Okay, must be about maybe one liter, oh, 500, maybe 250 half, so that you have enough space inside for you to mix your culture, something like that. Okay. For plant cell suspension is high, at least 10%. So if let's say just now the working volume is one liter, 10% means 100 milliliter, right? 
100 milliliter. One liter is 1,000 liter, uh, 1,000 milliliter, right? So 10% is 100, uh, 100 milliliter of uh, starter culture or inokum culture that you have grown before. Yeah, that is the amount needed for cultivating the plant cells. Uh, it's considered high for plant cells because it needs at least 10%. It could be more than that. It could be uh, 20%. I'm not I'm not really familiar with the plant cell or animal cells because I'm not uh, specializing in those fields. But uh, so I don't have any figure, exact figure to be given to you. Okay. But in general, it is high, okay? higher than bacteria and animal cell suspension. Right. Uh, in terms of shear stress sensitivity, uh, so I've talked about shear stress uh, in the first or set or in the second or first set lecture. So shear stress is something related to when you mix something. Yeah, if you imagine like you stir uh, your drinks, right? You stir with your spoon, right? There is um, circular motion inside, and of course, if you are talking about physics, there is a force inside. So the the greater the, the, the more intense the the speed or the stirring, it will be it will be more force inside. And so if you if you don't understand shear stress, me it's it's more to physics or engineering terms, but it's enough for you to imagine that the force inside the stirring system, mixing system. Okay. Uh, so bacterial cells, uh, because of they are small in size, they are not sensitive to shear stress. So uh, meaning to say that they are not sensitive, they are not easily broken by the force, uh, no, regardless of uh, whether you put like high speed or low speed. So that's why if you do bacterial fermentation in fermenter, uh, because in fermenter we have the speed of the agitator, the maximum speed for lapse cell reactor is about 1000 RPM. Uh, for bacteria, we can apply 1000 RPM. The maximum speed, uh, no problem with that because they are not sensitive to the force, to the shear stress. But for the animal cells, you cannot, you cannot apply uh, 1000 RPM. You, if you are using stirred tank reactor, the speed should be about 100 or 200 RPM. Uh, it depends again on the type, the specific type of the animal cells. But to show that how sensitive animal cells compared to the bacterial cells, because if you apply high speed, like if you apply high stirring, yeah, the animal cells will be broken. Uh, so that is the impact of it. Eh? Uh, whether why, what is sensitive, not sensitive. Uh, so they are broken. If let's say the animal cells are broken, means that there is no product at the end. So the fermentation will not happen. Okay. Uh, so that is in terms of the sensitivity for bacterial cells are not sensitive. For animal cells, they are very sensitive actually. Uh, plant cells also sensitive. Because of uh, if you see the structure of the plant cell and animal cells, they are they have many organelles inside right? because they, they are bigger. They have more organelles, and those organelles, for example, plant cells, uh, there is vacuole, right? Uh, so this vacuole, uh, it, it can be ruptured. It can be easily broken if you if you uh, apply. Uh, certain intense uh, agitation or mixing. So you just imagine something like a balloon, right? I mean, a balloon filled with water and you float it in the water, on the water. So you can see that it's like very big. So you can imagine the plant cells, something like that. So you, you can't actually like uh, be, uh, you know, you can apply um, too much stress on those balloons, right? Uh, otherwise, it will broken. So that's how you imagine. Compared to if, let's say, you put um, certain, like maybe guli, you know guli? Uh, you imagine guli to much like bacterial cell. Lah. So they are very robust. So regardless of you put like, uh, you stir strongly, right, in, in the suspension, they will not be broken, something like that. You compare the guli and the uh, balloon. The balloon to represents animal cells and plant cells. So you can see how is the comparison in terms of the sensitivity to shear. Okay. Um, so meaning to say that here for the bacterial cells, you can apply uh, rigorous mixing. Rigorous means like high speed mixing. But for the plant cell suspension, uh, of course, the plant cells cannot be cultivated using stirred tank right uh, right? But uh, animal cells, it can, but you have to apply low speed uh, in order to uh, make to add to maintain the viability of the cells. Okay. 
So aeration requirement for bacteria is high. Uh, for plant cells and animal cells is low. We need to say that because aeration media are can create to guard force the shear stress. So that's why you cannot apply too, um, too, too intense uh, aeration plant cells. You have to strike a balance uh, between the requirement and also you want to maintain the viability of the cells. Same thing with uh, the mixing of mixing characteristics. Uh. Okay. So any questions so far? Guys? Any question? No? Okay. Okay, thank you. I hope you still uh, get my points and you still remember what we discussed previously, especially in third time writer in the last lecture. Okay, plant cell cultures. Let's go to the plant cell cultures first. Um, the large-scale cultivation of plant cells in Bioreactor started in 1959 to 1960. Uh, this one is actually refers to plant biotech. Right? If you see the biotech field is considered, it's relatively a new field because it's just been, uh, the term has been coined like maybe 1950, like that. No, it's considered a new field uh, compared to other fields that is already 100 years. Uh. So biotech is, it started around that as well, like 1950s, actually. Uh, previously, people used stirred time reactor. When I say stirred time reactor, you have to imagine that there is something that stir inside, yeah? uh, the impellers and all this stuff. So that is stirred time reactor. Uh, it's a type of reactor. It's not the only reactor, but it's a type of reactor. So uh, in the beginning, in the early years of uh, development, research development in plant biotech, uh, researchers use third time reactor because they maybe they don't have ideas yet eh? how what is the best way to grow the uh, plant cells. But of course, during that time, uh, they would perhaps um, discover that third time reactor result in result uh, resulted in ruptured cells. At the end, they don't get the plant cells, you know, viable plant cells. So that is a problem. But that is actually the starting point uh, in plant biotech. Eh? They start. They started with a stirred time reactor, but throughout the years, okay, once they know better, uh, they have invented better platform. Okay, so uh, researchers use air leaf biorector for growing the plant cells. They no longer use stirred time reactor because it's it's not working well with the plant cells because plant cells are very sensitive to shear event. Uh, so um, the recent uh, technology in plant cell cultures uh, use elite pyrector to grow the plant cells. Because elite pyrector, it doesn't have the sterile, but it depends on the aeration, right? So you can imagine that uh, there is a... Oh, sorry. There is a spudger inside the pyrector. So from that spudger, the air or the oxygen comes up, okay? Um, to in order to provide the aeration inside the uh, cell cultures. And apart from the aeration purposes, uh, the aeration, below the other bubbles that I'm doing, it will create mixing. That's how the cultures will be distributed, will be mixed uh, properly. Uh, they don't have sterile, but it depends on the aeration for the mixing as well. Okay. Uh, characteristics of plant cell suspension. Okay, this is the structure of plant cells. Uh, I'm sure that you guys are familiar with it. You have studied this in even in biology and during evolution or form five. I still remember I studied this in biology. So this is a structures. Uh, there is a cell wall. There is cell membrane, right? And what else? There is a large central bubble. So this is uh, the component that makes plant cells are fragile. Fragile is like mudah pecah kan? Fragile. Okay. Cell wall, what is uh, inside the cell wall? There is cellulose, hemicellulose and pectin. But there is also uh, chloroplast that makes the plant cells green in color, right? Uh, large vacuole. Okay. The vacuole is used to store useful materials and digest waste proteins and organelles. Okay. So before you start, before you grow plant cells, you should understand very um, carefully or very well, uh, the characteristics, yeah, including the plant cell structure and so on. So just while working with plant biotech for your uh, FYP, 
you should take note uh, all the this basic uh, information, although that this is very basic, this basic biology, but you should understand it well in order to know how to grow it well later. Okay, um, so so what are the problems with the with the plant cell uh, cultures? Um, it has slow cell growth or proliferation uh, because of the uh, long doubling time. Just now I mentioned uh, the doubling time is between two to six days. Meaning to say that after two, between that two to six days, two baru they double, uh, baru they uh, multiply. So compared to bacteria, it takes only maybe two hours, or maybe just yeah, two hours to multiply. Yeah? You can see a big difference between uh, plant cell and bacteria. Um, plant cell transmission have slow growth rate. Uh, it needs large inoculation volume to speed the process. So why the so slow cell growth need, uh, is a problem to the plant cells? Because it, it means that the growth is slow. It takes longer time, maybe one month for all the phases to be completed. And what is actually the problem with that long period? Long, that one month, if let's say one month eh, for plant cells, that one is considering uh, perfect growth. If let's say you have contamination, uh, in the middle of that one month period, let's say after 15 days, there is a contamination. You need to say that you have to discard all the cultures and you have to start from day one again. Okay, that is the tedious part of uh, cultivating higher organisms because they need longer time to do that. Uh, and the risk, that is the risk uh, for uh, people in the lab when we do experiments. Uh, such thing is a, is a challenge uh, actually. Because you have to repeat your experiments. It means that you have to repeat your experiment and you have to plan your experiment very carefully. Otherwise, your time will be wasted just like that. Uh, especially for FYP, you only have uh, three months or three to four months uh, to complete your lab work. So you really have to plan your work very, very well, especially those who are working with animal and plant cells because the cultivation period takes a long time. So if let's say your experiment, you plan doesn't work. It, 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 that is normal. If, uh, actually, you don't you don't have to worry about making mistakes, but you have to plan. You have to be ready with so many uh, nila contingency plan for your research later. Uh, so it means that if let's say it doesn't work, so you have to start again. So you know that is actually the challenges, uh, especially in the industry, because in the industry. Um, we want to get the products uh, very soon, right? The time is actually a cost. So that is the challenges. Like it's not a problem. It's a challenge, as it is. Right? So the slow cell growth uh, of the plant cells is a challenge. Unlike the bacteria, uh, the bacteria just takes like 24 hours, right? If let's say you have to repeat the experiment, the fermentation, the bacterial fermentation, it just takes, um, you know, you can repeat it the next day even. Literally, you can just repeat it in the same week. And you can do a lot of experiment. In one week, you can have lots of experiment compared to uh, plant cells, you, one month maybe, but you have to run it in parallel. Uh. It's not just one experiment, one single experiment. You have to run in parallel. So that's why uh, for the plant and animal cell culture, you have to plan your experiments very carefully. You need to say that you have to run many things like in parallel, depends on the availability of the space as well. Uh, but that is a challenge, yeah? uh, the slow cell growth and proliferation. Um, it needs large inoculation volume to speed the process. So just now it, um, I mentioned that it needs at least 10% of the inoculation, inoculum density. Inoculation is the process of putting the inoculum inside the media for the fermentation. Okay? Uh, inoculum is the starter culture, the seed culture. So having said that, uh, it needs large inoculation volume. It means that it's a bit tedious uh, when we talk about things that you have to handle in the lab right? because you have to create like big volume of starter culture and uh, in terms of the cost, it's expensive as well. So that is the, the challenge with the plant cells. Uh, in terms of the structure of the cells, because the cells 
aggregate. Just now I mentioned that uh, it doesn't, uh, when we grow the cells, it doesn't grow individually. Individually means like in one cells, you know, it doesn't attach to another. But for the plant cells and animal cells, they are, they uh, aggregate normally, right, throughout the time. So meaning to say that after 10 hours or 10 days, after 20 days, there will be, you can see the aggregates, something like that. So the problem with the aggregates, it will make the whole plum, like the whole uh, knee heavy, right? Uh, and it is a challenge actually to mix well the things. Uh, and we know that the plant cells are very sensitive to mixing. So uh, we need to think, I mean, there is a challenge to think how we want to make sure that the cells can get access to the nutrients. Uh, somehow the mixing should happen but in a way that do not rupture the cells, the plant cells. That is the challenge. We have to strike a balance between mixing and um, between mixing and the viability of the cells. Yeah. Uh, that is a problem or that's a challenge. Uh, use alif to mix it. So that's one of the solution uh, normally adopted, right? Instead of using the third time wrapper. Uh, sensitivity to shear stress from the mixing process. Okay, I think I've mentioned this. Uh, plant cells are sensitive to shear. That is another one, another problem or another challenge compared to bacteria. Uh, fermentation is very easy. You just throw it and it will, you know, grow uh, well. But for the plant cell, we have to take care of it. We have to make sure that the mixing is doesn't affect the cells. Uh, so those are the things that you need to take into consideration. So. That's the challenges for the plant cell cultures. And this, this uh, pictures here shows the culture of cholera species for pigments. Yeah, you can see it's green pigments. Yeah? So that, that's how, this is actually, if you see the tubings here and the rod here, this is where the gas is inserted inside, the carbon dioxide in this case. Yeah? So aeration, that, that's a, this is a lab mat alif by rectum, but for, uh, we, I mean, it's met uh, in the lab. Lah. Tapi if, let's say, we, early by rectum, ni, dia ada yang memang manufactured by uh, supplier. So that one is the solid structure, but this one is if you want to make a uh, lab scale for your uh, culture, for the plant cells, you can insert tubing inside and that's how the uh, aeration is provided. And also the mixing. So because aeration to the akan, the motion so that's how the things can be uh, mixed inside. Okay, uh, operation of the plant cell by rector. Uh, it can be operated in a number of modes. So in the first lecture, we talked about batch, fat batch and continuous, right? Um, so batch knee is like when you put the things and you let the things grow. You don't you don't insert anything uh, during the cultivation. For the fat batch is when you add nubia uh, from time to time. Certain within certain time interval, you add fresh media, uh, but you don't take anything out. You don't harvest the product yet. So that is fat batch. Whereas continuous is when you feed and you harvest the product uh, at the same time. Yeah, so it's like uh, in there is input, there is output for continuum. But for a fat batch, it's only input. For batch, there is no input, there is output. Okay, that is in terms of the mod. So for the plant cell uh, cultivation, it can be operated in all of these modes, but because of the nature of the plant cells require a frequent change of medium, so fat batch is uh, the most highly uh, suitable method a highly suitable mode for cultivating uh, plant cells, plant cell cultures. Yeah? So, so we know that media is food, right? Uh, so uh, uh, the plant cells require frequent change of the food yeah? so that it can grow. So that is one of the requirements of the plant cells. Okay, so this is an example of a shikonin dye. Uh, this is this is actually the plant cells. So the, when we take some extract of the plant cells and we grow in the lab, uh, it looks like this. Yeah? It looks like this. Chiconin is, uh, is used as a textile dye. Yeah? It's a red pigment. 
Okay, so the way how the Shikonin uh, culture is, uh, Shikonin cell is culture is incubated in the lab. Um, it uh, employs uh, what we call two stage process. Yeah, uh, the total duration is 23 days. Yeah, this one is, that's why I say it's like uh, not necessarily one month, but one month in uh, on average life. So it depends also the type of the cells that you are culturing. Okay, so how this uh, shikonin dye is cultivated, shikonin cells are, shikonin uh, producing cells are cultivated. Uh, it is cultivated using two fermenter. Each of this is called fermenter. Um, started with high inoculation density in 200 liter alley fermenter, right? So the first fermenter here, and then after some time, 90% uh, of the culture is removed and uh, transferred to the second fermenter. Yeah? And uh, the second fermenter is added with a fresh medium. So that this is just uh, like one technique of producing, of cultivating the plant cells. Yeah? Uh, the cells mature and produce dye in the second vessels, right? Well, fresh cells and medium fill the first vessel. Okay. So this is, yeah, for the first uh, vessels, eh? nine days in the first vessel. So after nine days, it moved to the second vessel uh, for 14 days. Eh? So the reason why it changed the vessel is because of uh, the media, it needs to be changed. It needs to, uh, the, the, the plant cells may need to be provided with fresh media. So that's why in this case, uh, the second vessel is used. Eh? Okay. So this is one example. Actually, there are many types of uh, different types of plant cells. Eh? If you come across the articles uh, in the literature, right? There are many types of uh, different uh, plant cell cultures, well, and they are producing different products. Uh, and each of the plant cells require different techniques. Just now, the two-stage study, the Buddha Dua right there, is uh, what has been reported for Shikonin. Uh, dye production. Now. Okay. All right. Any question for the plant cells? So just now is this one is the red pigment production, right? Uh, the one that I showed in the beginning is the cholera. This is the green pigments, right? So this is under plant cells. Chiconin is also under plant cells because it is extracted from this uh, plant. Yeah? Okay. And uh, Further details about plant biotech. I think you have studied plant and tissue culture, right? In your second year, is it? Have you? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So you perhaps you you have an idea how you want to extract the uh, the tissue uh, the tissues from the plants and then you grow it, right? Mm -hmm. So that is another thing. Like that is this one is just to discuss the platform for cultivating plant cultures in general okay we have more questions on the, the science behind the plant cultures you have to refer to the whole i'm not an expert in plant cultures eh? okay so the next part will be animal cell cultures um so animal cell cultures in general the size is actually much smaller than the plant cells uh, but they have like certain similarities in terms of the sensitive sensitivity to shear yeah? they are similar to plant cells they are sensitive to shear but perhaps animal cells is a little more um if let's say the plant cells is uh, have the the highest uh shear sensitivity animal cell is a little bit uh they, they can tolerate a little bit yeah, that's why uh, for animal cell cultures uh some in some cases we can still use Stirt tank reactor. Stirt tank reactor is the one that has the impedance, right? But we have to operate the reactor at low speed, yeah? not at high speed, not, not as like high speed as uh, the one that we use for the microorganisms. So that is the difference if we want to use the animal cell cultures. But perhaps the impeller will be different. Impeller is the one that looks like a fan inside, the one that drives the mixing. So there is a, there are certain uh, special types of impellers used for animal cell cultures, which are different from uh, bacteria, yeast, and fungi uh, fermentation. Okay. So you might be wondering, why uh, 
in what cases we use animal cell as the expression system. Uh, I hope you're familiar with the term expression system because um, when you talk about genetic engineering, you have the expression system to express your product of interest, right? And expression system, it can be from it can be of different organism. It can be bacteria, it can be yeast, it can be animal cells, fungi, right? Plant cells, even expression is a expression system is the system that is used to express the product of interest, right? Okay. So why there are some products produced by bacteria? There are some products produced by yeast. There are some products produced by fungi, by animal cell, plant cells. Why? Any answer from you guys? What what makes on the on the product that we want because yes. probably some cell have a uh, different metabolic pathways. Okay, correct. Yes. Very good. Every organism could give multiple products. Okay. Um yeah, uh, I like your answer as well. So I mean okay, thanks for the yeah. answer. Okay, thanks for the answer. So if we, we if we talk about products need the other verbase like Kalau let's say bacteria is the simplest organism. So some of the proteins, complicated proteins, contohnya, contoh uh, vaccine. Vaccine is considered as a complex uh, protein, complex product, complex uh, product. Eh? So vaccine ni dipakai oleh manusia kan? Uh, so so uh, because of us, we are actually very close to animals, right? Uh, animals are higher organism. So animals, they have certain, um, certain, certain mechanism that can uh, produce uh, whatsoever the protein of interest, uh, let's say vaccine, in a way that can be, uh, that can be used by us. I, I, bagi, uh, I, I try to make it easy for you to understand. Uh, so bacteria, because of the bacteria or uh, need, the structure is very simple. They don't have endoplasmic reticulum, right? They, uh, so meaning to say that some of the process uh, uh, that involved in the making of the protein is not available. They don't have the mechanism to produce it. So that's why uh, certain products are not suitable to be produced by lower organisms like bacteria or yeast. Okay. Uh, they, they can produce products yang simple, contohnya enzymes and dikunya untuk uh, what, wastewater treatment, okay, something that is, uh, that have much um, less serious application, like vaccine is like very serious application that is for, for, um, for uh, health, yeah, for me, okay, health purposes. Tapi kalau yang, it's just like enzyme, simple enzyme, uh, in that sense, we can use lower organisms because they don't need a uh, complicated um, process to make it, okay? Uh, so that's why in certain cases, uh, especially pharmaceutical products, they are mostly produced by animal cell cultures because animal cell cultures, they have uh, more uh, mechanism that can prepare uh, whatever the products so that the products is very close to the nature uh, Properties lah, so that it can be you know, can it can be used by normally human like therapeutic proteins and okay. So these are some examples of products that are produced by animal cell cultures. Yeah, uh, antibodies. You can see that most of them are actually therapeutic uh, proteins eh? that are used for uh, treating vaccines, insecticide, enzymes, hormones emotional regulators. Eh? Uh, so, uh, for examples of animal cell cultures, uh, the common one is Chinese hamster ovary. So, hamster yang tikus tu. So, they take the cell line and they use it as the mammalian, uh, as the force for producing. Uh, normally, it's monoclonal antibodies. Eh? Okay. So, that is uh, in general why animal cell cultures are uh, preferred over microorganisms because they have uh, all these post-translational modification mechanism 
in order to prepare complex protein. Okay, so design of animal cell biorectors. So just now in the first slide, we have talked about the characteristics comparison between bacteria and uh, plant cells, right? Uh, one of them uh, is sensitive to shear. So in uh, when you cultivate the animal cells, you have to take a uh, few considerations as well, okay? uh, such as the surface adherence properties of the cells. I'll talk about it in the later slide. Just go through first the points. Uh, shear sensitivity of the cells, yeah? because we know that the cell, animal cells are sensitive to shear, so you cannot use, uh, you cannot apply rigorous mixing. Yeah, you have to take care of it and you have to find a balance between providing a mixing and the viability of the cells. Uh, forming in medium with high protein content. So when you cultivate the animal cells throughout the time, uh, there will be formation of foam. foam eh? So uh, this form, if it is excessive, it will create a problem because it will uh, perhaps, if, if let's say it uh, goes out the platform, it can uh, induce the contamination. Yeah? Uh, so that's the problem or the challenges. Uh, problems in mass transfer due to slow stirring. Okay, so because of we cannot apply high speed, uh, the the problem occur will be the uh, inefficient mixing. The reason why we need mixing is because we want the cells to get the nutrients. Yeah? Uh, mixing is a very important aspect in fermentation. So that's why. Um, is something that becomes a challenge for animal cells and plant cells. Uh, removal of toxic waste products. Okay, because animal cells, it takes long time, eh? more than three weeks normally. Uh, so three, let's say, let's let's assume like one month. Eh? So throughout that one month, of course, uh, you expect that your uh, animal cells will produce your target protein. Target protein is the one that will be the main products. Like, for example, if you are producing monoclonal, monoclonal antibodies, MAB, uh, so that will be the main product. But apart from the main product, there are other proteins produced, which are byproducts. Eh? Byproducts are side products. Huh? So uh, some of the side products, some of the byproducts, they might be toxic. Yeah? They might be toxic. So throughout that one month period, uh, if let's say the accumulation of the byproducts the toxic products, uh, byproducts, some of them are toxic, not all, tapi yang, uh, if let's say the, the toxic products need banyak, right? uh, so it will affect the production of the main product, uh, which is, let's say, in the example just now, it's monoclonal antibody. So if let's say there's some tahap yang can inhibit the product, that is a problem as well. And uh, throughout that one month period, you have to, uh, make sure that the toxic product will not be uh, that really will not be accumulated too much in a way that can inhibit your main product, the product, uh, the production of the main product. So that is another uh, challenge in animal cell biorector because the period is long, it's one month. Anything can happen, you know. If let's say suddenly the toxic product becomes like you know uh, accumulated uh, higher than you as and what you expect. So you have to think how you want to save your uh, culture. Yeah? Um, so that is another problem. Uh, compared to like bacterial fermentation in 24 hours, it, it doesn't, although sometimes like the side products, they are toxic, it can inhibit the main product, but it doesn't happen that really long yeah? because the duration is uh, shorter than uh, animal and plant cells. Yeah? Uh, ease and reliability of scale up. Okay, so if you see here, this is um, this is what we call roll bottle for animal cells. It's used for animal cell cultures. So meaning to say that uh, these bottles normally they are put on a platform that is like rotated mildly. Okay, uh, if you think about the seesaw, okay, seesaw. Uh, so the macam platform to dalam lab, it looks like that. So these bottles will be like. Um, Will be will, will be going up and down, but in a very low speed. Yeah? So that is just to provide mixing. Uh, so this one is a small scale culture. Uh, so this is just I think about one hundred milliliter. Yeah? But if you if let's say and let scale is uh, small scale. Uh, if let's say you want to increase the scale, let's say you have uh, optimized uh, the cultivation and you want to produce more. 
Uh, you cannot rely on this portal anymore. You have to think about bigger platform. Okay, so that is what we call scale up. So when we cultivate the animal cell cultures in the bottle, uh, it will not be similar if you want to cultivate larger volume in the bioreactor. So in a bioreactor, you have to study a, uh, you have to study the platform. You have to study how you want to provide the mixing. Yeah, it's no longer in a bottle because in the bottle it's like easy lah for you to control them. But for the larger reactor, it will be a challenge. Okay, uh, and you have to think about how you want to provide missing, but you don't want to break the cells. Uh, so all those things have to be taken into consideration. So the scale up will be a challenge for uh, cultivating the animal cell viruses. For even for the bacteria, for the fungi, for the yeast, if you want to transfer the scale from shake plus, okay, shake plus is used for microorganisms, but not for animal cell viruses. Shape plus is a uh, small scale cultures, okay, small scale platform. So if you want to uh, grow of, or if you want to um, ferment, um, you, you want to change the scale from shape plus to bigger bioreactor, there are few things that you have to consider in the bioreactor because the things will not be 100% um, similar. Yeah? The shape plus is simple, of course, it's, it's much easier. But for the bioreactor, you have to consider a lot of things. You have to think about the mixing and so on. Okay, so that is actually a challenge not not only for the animal cell bioreactor, uh, animal cell cultures, but also for the microbial cell cultures. But for the animal cell cultures, is more because of the sensitivity of the shear compared to the microbial, which are more robust. Yeah, so that is another challenge for the animal cell cultures. Uh, recently, there is a trend towards using single-use bioreactor for culturing animal cell cultures. Okay, so I've mentioned about single-use bioreactor in my previous lecture. So single-use bioreactor, as the name implies, uh, is a type of bioreactor that is only uh, to be used for once, for a single time. Okay, uh, normally the, uh, the structure of the vessel is made from plastic. Uh, so, and it is um, provided, it is actually manufactured um, in a way that it is already sterilized. Uh, so, meaning to say that if I purchase the single use bioreactor, the plastic bioreactor, it, it is like sealed properly and I can use it directly for fermentation because it doesn't need autoclaving. It has been autoclaved, uh, it has been sterilized uh, at the factory. Okay, so that is the concept of single use bioreactor. So this single-use bioreactor, the idea why people invented single-use bioreactor is because um, they want to solve, uh, they want to minimize the problems in animal cell cultures. Animal cell cultures, um, they are very prone to contamination as well. So meaning to say that the preparation must be very uh, thorough. You don't, you have to be careful with uh, the steps of preparing the media and so on. And one of the ways how to minimize the contamination for animal cell cultures is to use a brand new bioreactor so that you don't have to worry about any potential possible residues from the previous uh, batches or operations. Okay, contohnya kalau kita guna shake plus kan, shake plus is a glass, it's made of glass. So we can use it for many times. This is for uh, microbial fermentation. Tapi if let's say you have to make sure that after you, uh, after the every fermentation ends, you have to, of course, you have to kill it, you have to kill the cultures, you have to autoclave it. Uh, and after you autoclave, you have to wash it as usual, you have to wash it with soap. Eh? Uh, but sometimes uh, the washing might not be thorough. There must be, there might be some residues, especially when the shake plus is a, a baffle shake plus. There is a baffle one. So they added a uh, certain age, young, maybe perhaps you don't, you, you know, uh, you don't notice it. Yeah? some residues. So those residues will be brought in the following fermentation. Uh, to be, to, um, that is an example of cross-contamination between batches. Okay, But for a uh, single-use bioreactor, you don't have to worry about such things because uh, the bioreactor is brand new bioreactors, you know, uh, never used before. So there is no, I mean, no risk of contamination in that sense. So that's why people invented this uh, type of single-use bioreactor, actually. 
And the reason why maybe you can you are wondering as well, like single use director, was it will would it be expensive? Because you have to purchase a new director every single time, right? Uh, but in the industry, people are more concerned with the cost of the media of the animal cell cultures, which are more expensive actually. So they don't care about the platform because to us, to them, uh, the the media is more important and the product is more important and they don't want to face any risk of contamination. Okay, so if let's say, if let's say they, they, they want to compromise with that, they want to use like a uh, recyclable vessel, uh, so there is a risk of contamination perhaps. Uh, so they have to juga lah, incur the cost juga lah. if let's say the contamination happens, they will not get the products. So they have to repeat again the process. Eh? So that is a different uh, different perspective lah in uh, in culturing the animal cells. Eh? At certain points, the manufacturer or the industrial player, they, they have to compromise the cost because they are more concerned with the product, not with the media, which are more expensive for animal cells. Perhaps for the uh, microbial fermentation is not really a big concern because uh, if you if you use the flask, if you clean it properly, still uh, there is very minimal uh, risk of contamination. I think also animal cells, because animal cells in like produce vaccine. Contohnya, uh, is to produce therapeutic proteins, which is for human consumption. So that's why uh, the the level of seriousness is more actually compared to if you want to produce uh, contohnya enzymes and guna untuk wastewater. You don't, you don't consume it, right? Human don't consume it. It's just like for treating the wastewater to reduce the pollution. It's not that really critical as therapeutic proteins uh, like those produced by animal cell cultures. Yeah? So that's why uh, you know, single use biorectomy, they are actually the idea or the motivation of this the creation of this narrative is actually for animal cell cultures. Okay. Any questions so far? Do you get what I deliver? The points that I deliver? Excellent. Any question, guys? No? I hope my uh, lecture is clear. Right, you can stop me at any time if uh, there is anything unclear. Okay, so the type of rector, how uh, how to get rid of this? <laughs> so the type of rector uh, for animal cell cultures, uh, this is more to uh, like the technique of growing the cell cultures. Okay, uh, not really on the bioreactor system. Okay, this is like a technique for cultivating the animal cell cultures. So uh, there is what we call attached growth system. Attached growth system. So as the name implies, uh, the cells are actually attached. Attached. Yeah? So the reason why is because uh, this is one method, like another method yang ada juga yang sebenarnya dalam suspension, but this one is actually uh, to protect the animal cells. Because you know the animal cells are very sensitive to shear. So when when the cells are attached on the surface, and what we do is just to flow the media through it, so it will minimize the risk of uh, the rupture, the breaking. Yeah? Okay. So what happened in this uh, system is that uh, the cells are immobilized by trapping them on the surface or inside the gel. So uh, you imagine just now kan, yang tadi tu macam the roller bottle tu. Actually, you, you can't see it with the naked eye, but actually what happened is that uh, the cells are actually um, attached on the surface. Okay? And there is a linking agent used in order to make the cells attach. Okay? But uh, uh, you just imagine, you, know, uh, you just imagine like on the surface, the cells are attached. And if let's say you mix it, like you put like some, uh, you put like, you apply some mixing, Actually, what is mixing, what is uh, going back and forth is the media, the media going through the cells. Okay, uh, So the idea of immobilizing the animal cells is actually to protect the cells from, uh, from rupture. Okay? Uh, there are various support material to surface uh, 
battery pros, yeah, which are made from different uh, types of materials like polyethylene, polycarbonate, glass steel, polypropylene. Yeah. So this is examples of different uh, materials that are used to attach the cells. And different cells process differing growth requirement, and there's no one particular system. Okay, so how you attach it, what kind of uh, linking agent to be used, it depends on the type of the uh, animal cells. Because animal cells, I'm just talking in general. Okay, so these are examples of the attachment. Uh, the first here, you can see that the cells are attached on a support surface. This is auto immobilization, meaning to say that they are perhaps they are linked together by certain uh, leaking agent. Okay, but this is without the surface. So this is called auto immobilization. This one is immobilization. This is our animal cells, huh? animal cells money. Uh, this one is on a support surface. Yeah? So the cells are immobilized. Immobilized means they are not going anywhere. They are just attached to it. So this one is a uh, mechanical containment behind a barrier. So this is a structure yeah, that contain the animal cells inside. So the animal cells are retained inside that. And this one is a uh, porous matrix. Right, porous matrix. Porous means the media can come uh, back and forth. So it is not. Um, it is it is porous. Lah. Porous ni mana dia boleh serap masuk eh? uh, Porous. Eh? So these are different types of uh, attachment. Okay, uh, and which one suits which animal cells better? It depends on the cells. Um, earlier development used roller bottles uh, for the uh, cells to attach. Okay, uh, the cells may be induced to absorb to a sub to a support material using leaking agent. Okay, leaking agent ni adalah uh, agent or chemicals that are added that makes the cells to attach on the surface. Okay, without a, uh, without leaking agent, perhaps the cells might not attach. Eh? They untuk meletakkan that cells on the surface, uh, they need linking agent. So these are examples of linking agent, metal oxide, glycerol dehyde, amino cyanine, okay? Uh, and it depends on the type as well, which one suits better or works better. Uh, the three types of attachment, okay, this is how the attachment of the cells on the surface, okay, so this is what we call monolayer attachment. Each of these are cells, huh? okay, uh, they are hanya, uh, one layer, that's why it's called monolayer. So this bulk flow refers to the flow of the media. So this one, contohnya dalam ni, this is the roller bottle. Eh? So, of course, you cannot see the animal cells attached on the surface, but what happened actually, the cells are actually attached on this one. Lah, uh, so, when you uh, when you roll it, it's called roller bottle, it's because the bottle are rolled up and down, okay, uh, in a very gentle uh, way. Lah. Uh, so, what is actually flowing is the media, okay, is the media. So, bila dia contoh, the cells to attach, so the media comes, uh, flow uh, back and forth, in order to give the nutrients to the uh, animal cells. Okay, so the bulk flow is there. So the second type of attachment is biofilm. We call it biofilm is because there are many layers, not only one layer. There are many layers. Uh, you can see there are many layers here. So it it creates like a uh, biofilm. Uh, this is biofilm. The whole thing, the whole layers. Uh, so the bulk flow is uh, also new, but it's actually more challenging in this sense because uh, there are more layers, right? So some of the layers, perhaps uh, you have to make sure that the flow goes through all the cells compared to the mono layer here. Uh, it doesn't have that really much problems compared to biofilm. Yeah? And then this one is gel entrapment on a surface. So meaning to say that there is a type of gel used to entrap 
the cells. So this is all the cells. Um, so the type of the jelly, it can be is uh, it can be very it's a, it's a polymer matrix. Yeah. So the flow is going through the gel. Okay. And the flow of the media. Okay. The media is the food to the cells. Yeah. So these are the three types of attachment: monolayer, biofilm, and gel entrapment on the surface. Okay. Uh, entrapment in a matrix. So just now is attachment on a surface. So entrapment in a matrix means that there is a type of a structure that holds the cells inside. Okay. Uh, so dia dalam reactor, it looks like this. It looks like small bits. Yeah? Uh, small bits. And inside that bits, actually, there are cells. Okay. Uh, so the material for the matrix, uh, it can be natural polymers or synthetic polymers. So these are examples of materials used to construct the matrix. Uh, the cells are entrapped in the gels under mild temperature. So again, you can see that actually the cells are immobilized and the flow of the media is the one that flows through the, uh, now the matrix are just now, is, they are attached on the surface, right? Uh, so the casing here rotates slowly in order to provide the flow of the media to all the uh, matrix containing the cells. Okay. The disadvantages of this system, uh, although that there is a mixing inside, but sometimes the distribution of the nutrients might not be uniform. If some, it might be it might not be fully efficient. So that is a challenge, uh, and it is difficulty to control and monitor the cell growth process because the cells are now in the matrix. Yeah. Um, compared to if let's say you imagine bacteria cleaning fermentation is so easy because you just take out the samples, the culture, and you measure the absorbance. And you know, I mean, of course, you have to monitor throughout the fermentation period in order to monitor the cell growth. But this one is, uh, it depends on the reactor uh, for this system. Uh, perhaps I'm not really familiar with animal cell biology. Perhaps you have to sample the whole uh, matrix and get the cells. Right. Is it currently on? Can you guys answer uh, me? Sorry, slide up. We were missing you. You must not join last. Yeah, but that's already. Yeah, we got slide up already. Oh, yeah, the which slide? Oh, yeah. Let me stop sharing. Then, I say this might go blast. Hey, I check out some wrong. Good you all that now. Fuck, you know, I share. Go blast. Oh, that's it. Slide go blast. Is it this slide? Can someone verify with me? Can you guys see this slide just now? Sorry, you have to stop me somewhere because I, I do not know what you guys can see, what you guys can't see. Uh, did you see this slide just now? This slide? Yes. Okay, yes. So maybe this one? This one? Yes. Yes. Uh, this one, I don't know. Okay. Uh, let me see the question. I do I do this one. Let me see. Let me see. Chat. First chat. I think I see. Navigating this. That's uh, System. Okay, I just want to know. Right. Sorry for the problem. Uh, if I start somewhere, you have to shout because I might not notice what you write on the chat box. Huh? You know, you can see the slide, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so just now we talk about attachment again. So this one is uh, entrapment, okay? uh, the cells are entrapped in the matrix, okay, 
So the matrix thing, it looks like bits. Eh? Contohnya macam ni, it's like uh, many bits here. And each of the bits containing many cells inside. Okay. Uh, so this one is a bi-rector. Eh? This is a, a bi-rector for animal cell cultures. Eh? This is a special bi-rector for animal cell cultures. And this thing will actually, there is still mixing, but be very slow. And this, the whole thing here is called casing, right? Um, so that's how it was like the, the flow, uh, the flow of the media, dalam tu ada media juga. So the media will flow through this porous matrix. Uh, the reason why it is porous is because it will enable uh, the input and output, uh, the, the flow throughout the layer here. Okay, porous. Kalau porous dia tak, kalau dia tak, tak porous ni, dia tak dapat masuk lah. The, the fluid tu, the media. So that's why it's very important to have a porous matrix. So the disadvantage of this system is very difficult to control and monitor the cell growth processes because now you imagine the cells are inside the matrix. That is why each of these are matrix. So throughout that, uh, 20, uh, let's say one month period, uh, you cannot just let your cultures grow like that because you do not know if you don't monitor. So what you have to do is like you have to take the samples every, for animal cultures is for every day perhaps. Yeah, you have to, uh, you have to measure the growth. You have to perhaps, for the bacteria is easy. Like you just measure the absorbance every two hours, for example. For yeast, maybe every a little bit longer, maybe four hours, six hours in order to know the growth. So that's how you can plot the cell growth profile that you do based on the absorbance. Uh, for the animal cells, it's a bit tricky because now you imagine the cells are inside the matrix and in order to know whether they are growing or not, you have to take out the matrix, right? Uh, I'm not really sure the exact method how you measure the animal cells because it's uh, it's really different from the microorganisms. But basically, you have to take out the matrix and you have to do the analysis on the cells inside the matrix. Okay. So having said that, it's it's a bit tricky to monitor the growth yeah? to have direct measurement of the cell culture. Okay. So that is the entrapment. So I'm just here discussing how the cells are. Uh, arrange are uh, entrapped in a matrix, right? And this is the bi-rector for the animal cell cultures. So the previous method is attachment, okay? attachment on the um, surface yeah? for the animal cells. So examples of product from surface attachment. Okay, actually this surface attachment, um, it is actually, it refers to a method, a method that is mostly used for animal cells. Tapi untuk uh, Bacteria ataupun untuk fungi pun ada juga diguna, eh? surface attachment. This is just a method of attaching the organism, the cells on the surface and you flow the media, okay? So this method is also used for bacteria, fungi. So examples of the products produced using this method, uh, amylase en enzyme from bacillus. Tapi sebenarnya untuk bacteria, tak ada masalah sangat sebenarnya sebab Bacteria, they are uh, sensitive to shear, so you can just let it freely in the suspension. Uh, it can still grow well, actually. But this is just to show that the method is also used um, in other organisms. Eh? So for fungal cells, example is ectachronic acid produced by Aspergillus teres. For animal cells, it's mostly used by animal cells. Uh, it can be a protein. There are many proteins that are produced by animal cells using this method. Okay. So examples of product from entrapment in a matrix for the mammary cells, uh, regeneration of bone tissue using uh, red osteosarcoma cells. This is examples of it. Okay. For the bacteria and fungi also, there are other products that can be produced using entrapment in a matrix. Okay. So what is this actually? I'm not getting really Oh, okay. Okay, the problems in the animal cell cultures. Any question, guys? Okay. Uh, problems in animal cell cultures. Um, challenges, you can see. The source of water. Okay, so when you prepare the media, um, contohnya kalau we uh, prepare, uh, I'm sorry if I give a lot of examples for microorganisms uh, rather than animal or plant cells because 
um, I'm not really familiar exactly with uh, how the works for the animal cell and plant cell cultures. Uh, but for the microbial fermentation, eh, if you say you prepare the media, you have certain formulation, right? Uh, nitrogen, and you dissolve all the things in a solution. Okay, that solution should be water. Tapi dia bukan water yang you pakai guna tap water. It must be RO water, reverse osmosis water, uh, or distilled water. Okay, so that is normally for microorganisms. So the reason why you cannot use tap water because tap water has is not uh, sterile actually in terms of it has many impurities. Okay, but distilled water, reverse osmosis water, they don't have other particles, they don't have other nutrients. So it's solely water. So that's why you use uh, distilled water or RO water eh, for preparing um, a media for microorganism. Eh. Tapi untuk animal cell cultures, they don't use distilled water. They don't even use, even though uh, they don't use distilled water or RO water, they have certain type of uh, a little more advanced type of water, eh, which is called uh, pyrolyzed water, yeah, which is obtained uh, through a process above 200 degrees Celsius. So this is a type of water used for preparing the media. And apart from pyrolyzed water, they can also use melted ice deep within the Greenland glacier. Okay, this one, because we are in tropical countries, we're not in Europe. So this one is um, it's not the option here. Lah. Yeah, I think normally we use pyrolyzed water, but uh, uh, Ultra filtration, reverse osmosis. Uh, uh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, eh, salah eh. Reverse osmosis, they boleh pakai, tapi uh, not distilled water, I guess. So they, they use like different uh, types of water or special type of water in order to prepare the media. And having said that, this this is actually a cost for the media. So that's why uh, animal cell cultures, the media is expensive actually in general. Not this is not yet considering the components of the uh, media like the carbon source and nitrogen source and so on, uh, which are different from those needed by um, microorganisms. Yeah? And then uh, source of serum. Serum needs uh, serum is needed by uh, animal cell cultures, and serum is actually expensive. Yeah? The preparation and everything, right? Uh, and that is a cost. Uh, it's a challenge for the animal cell cultures. Yeah? And also, yeah, and not just uh, about the cost of the serum, but also the nature of the serum, which is often contaminated with viruses. So that is um, the preparation of the serum before uh, it is to be used for the animal cultures. That is also a cost. It, it needs to be irradiated with gamma ray compared to uh, microbial fermentation or media. Uh, they don't have that really much uh, requirement compared to these animal cell cultures. Shear stress and bubbles, again, about the shear stress. Um, the, because of the nature of the animal cells are sensitive to shear. So uh, we need this kind of uh, reagents in order to enhance the strength of the animal cells. Perhaps if, let's say, you don't add this, uh, the animal cells can still grow, but they have a uh, very high sensitivity. And if you add uh, these reagents, uh, which uh, which are used to enhance the strength of the cells, uh, animal cells, right? So perhaps they are more viable or they are less fragile. Tapi ini adalah cost lah. So all of these are cost actually. So in the industry, um, it will actually create or uh, it contribute. Uh, to the cost of the products produced, yeah? because all of these things need to be considered. Yeah? So those are the challenges in animal cell cultures. Okay, so this is just to show the comparison of sorry, the comparison uh, between mammalian cell and plant cell, right? Uh, mammalian actually it requires higher initial investment compared to plant cells. You can see in terms of the bioreactor and you know, the uh, early bioreactor, you can use early bioreactor, but for the animal cells, you need special type of system in order to uh, cultivate the animal cells. So in general, um, 
the investment is higher, yeah? the, is more expensive for the mammalian cell cultures, less expensive for the plant cell production. Okay. A strict control environment for the mammalian cell cultures yeah, because it's easily contaminated. Right? And yeah, I forgot to mention for the single use biorectors, it's even more expensive, yeah, uh, which is used for the mammalian cell production because single cell media is single use. So you have to buy lots of single use biorectors. Uh, I also use single use biorectors when I did my PhD, uh, even though I grow bacteria because uh, single use biorectors is not just used for mammalian cells. Actually, uh, kalau, um, you know, um, lab lab yang quite kaya ataupun ada duit, ada fun, uh, we can also use single use biorectors for bacteria, for yeast, for fungi. Even actually in the industry, they are actually using single use biorectors for microorganisms. Uh, just to share to you the cost, uh, uh, I use uh, Micro24. So it it looks like a cassette. A cassette ini ada banyak rector kecil. So the whole cassette, uh, including the caps, uh, it costs, it not cost me, it costs my supervisor 300 pounds. 300 pounds every single run, every experiment. 300 pounds. Pounds, uh, one pound is five ringgit or about six ringgit, five to five fifty ringgit, that depends on the currency rate. Yeah? Uh, ringgit. Okay, uh, 300 times five is, let's say five, 1,500 for every experiment that I did uh, when I was in the UK. Uh, so you can see how expensive it is. Sekali experiment saja 1,500. If let's say you want to compare using like a uh, recyclable vector, you just invest on the cost one off then. You don't have to invest on the cost every single time. Yeah? So, you see here uh, for the mammalian cell, uh, if let's say they are using single use biorectors, uh, of course they are using it for the industry. Yeah? So you can imagine how expensive it is. Uh, my example just now is a small rectum. Itu hanya just macam untuk lab scale. Kalau untuk mammalian ni, dia maybe untuk industry ni, uh, the size might, might be bigger, right? And it could be more than that, more than 1,500 ringgit. It could be like maybe 5,000 ringgit bring it uh, 10,000, I don't know. It depends on the size. Huh? So you can imagine how expensive it is. Uh, and that's why the therapeutic proteins, uh, whatever the vaccine, the drugs, that's why it's expensive huh? because of the cost of the production is uh, not cheap. Huh? Right. Um, street control environment, expensive maintenance. Huh? It's not just about expensive investment on the initial investment on the equipment, but also the maintenance. Just now, macam tadi kan, I guna uh, single-use directors. It's part of the maintenance. Uh, there are the, it has its own platform for sharing, for uh, operating the single-use directors. That is a uh, paid one-off, macam machine, satu machine. But the cassette is uh, what is uh, to be replaced every single time. That is considered maintenance. So the whole machine that I used was about 70,000 uh, pounds. So that is initial investment then. So maintenance to young, young director, single use director that I use every single experiment. That is an example of maintenance. So every single time, can you can you call? So um, for the mammalian cell production, color system and good single use to memang mahala actually. So it's expensive. For the plant cell, it's uh, less expensive in general, right? Uh, for the mammalian cell production, is very uh, prone to viral contamination yeah, because of the dalam animal cell to the other actually uh, is is a complex process. You know? So there are many uh, sometimes um, uh, uh, virus yang mungkin ada, yeah, mungkin uh, apa ya? yang mungkin ni lah uh, produce throughout the process. Yeah? So that's why it's um, it's very risky in terms of uh, the contamination for the mammalian cells compared to the plant cells. Yeah? Okay, so that is the comparison between uh, both cultures. So the last few slides here is to share with you different types of impellers for animal and plant cell cultures. So previously, when we talk about stirred tank reactor, uh, it's actually not this one. I think it's, we don't have. I don't have it. Can we see? Oh, I don't have. So the impellent used for the microbial fermentation for bacteria, yeast, fungi, uh, normally we use Rushton turbine. 
Right, since the binary dia macam, it, it looks like this, but uh, normally it has six blades. Yeah. Um, and uh, it is not, it's not suitable for the animal cultures because uh, they generate very high shear force, high shear stress. So for animal plant, animal and plant cell cultures, they uh, plant cell. I'm not really sure. Uh, normally, it's like for animal for the for this stud tank vector. So the type of the impellers, uh, this one is the one that that is attached to the agitator. This is the whole thing here is agitator shaft, and the motor is the one that gives the power for the uh, rotation. Eh? Uh, so this one is the one that will be different from for, for the animal cell cultures, the impellers. This is for impellers, eh? uh, the one here impeller, ni, you know, attached to the city. So that will create uh, unto animal cell cultures, uh, the impellers that create uh, less shear stress will be used. Eh? So for example, this anchor, spiral, yeah. And apart of apart from the type of the impellers, the speed of the uh, agitation should not be operated at high speed as well. So that's how you carry out the uh, cultivation for uh, cell cultures, animal cell cultures. So plant cells, I don't know why this one says plant cells. I mean, normally we don't use the time record for plant cells. We use early uh, except for early uh, years in plant uh, research development, they use the tank, but the recent biorectors used were uh, our early biorectors. Okay, so that's, I think the last slide, yes. Okay, so that's all about uh, today's lecture. So basically, we covered, um, we covered uh, the requirement of cultivations for plant cells and animal cells, yeah? basically in terms of how the biorector looks like, the platform looks like yeah, for cultivating plant cells and animal cells. Right, so any question? So far? Any question, guys? Anything you are, you are not clear? No? Okay. Are you guys still with me? Hello. Are you guys with me? Yes, doctor. Yes, okay. Yes, doctor. Uh, does the baffle also affect the sheer force of the agitation? Yes. Because baffle need dia untuk uh to improve the mixing. Baffle, uh, agitator is the one in the middle, right? Baffle ni yang kat, te, uh, kat tepi, okay? Uh, dia actually macam dekat, dia akan sit dekat uh, very close to the edge of the vessel, okay? So, kalau, let's say, dia macam, kalau uh, we talk about engineering, eh, kalau dalam uh, dynamics of the fluid tu, kalau dia hanya macam rely on uh, the impeller, uh, now I'm talking about Step tank vector untuk macam ni lah kalau yang rotate tengah, uh, tengah tengah. So kalau tak ada baffle tu dia akan macam ada dead zone dekat tepi baffle. Eh oh, sorry tepi baffle. Tepi uh, vessel. So, macam contohnya macam ni ya. Eh. Uh, thank you for the question. Okay, you guys can see the, this uh, empty blank slide. Okay. Yeah. Nampak tak slide ni? Ten? Yes. Nampak. Okay, so uh, just now you asked about the baffle tu kan? Okay, so let's say this is the rector. Sorry for not uh, having this uh, proper drawing. Yeah. Sorry lah. Okay, let's say this is the impeller, kan? Uh, the agitation system, okay? 
This is the impeller, right? Okay, so this is the dual impeller. Okay, uh, so of course the mixing will happen inside, right? Uh, I mean, when this thing uh, is agitated, it will happen in circular motion inside. Tapi, uh, at certain point, kalau tak ada bevel, bevel will sit somewhere here. Actually, they they, they attach with the top plate. Top plate ni yang uh, this one, yang lead tu, the lead. The lead tu dia ada attach dekat situ lah sebenarnya, bevel tu. Dia ada something like a structure. Macam ni? Dia macam ni sebenarnya. Macam ni. Ada macam ada ni lah. Dia ada macam uh, metal yang uh, macam ni lah. Dia macam tu lah. Dia punya sekeliling vessel tu. So when you take the top plate, the lid of the rector, so that bevel attached to that. Okay. So this uh, bevel, uh, fungsi dia adalah, kalau let's say tadi kan, uh, let's say without bevel lah, let's say this is the impeller, dia akan rotate kat sini. Okay. Uh, but at certain point, ada dead zone. Dead zone. Dead zone ni maknanya, the mixing doesn't happen there actually. That zone, young stagnant zone. Okay. Uh, this is engineering lah. Huh? Uh, so what happened is that the cells at that place, it will not be mixed. Walaupun in general you see that the things, the system, the whole system is is uh, rotating. Okay. Tapi ada dead zone sebenarnya. Kalau tak ada baffle. But if there is a baffle, it will help actually. It will eliminate the dead zone. They can create a uh, flow yang lebih efficient inside your rectal. So that is the uh, purpose of having the baffle. Okay, kalau uh, shape plus also, shape plus, kalau shape plus, eh? uh, LMA plus, eh? shape plus. Eh, just saw it for them. Uh, okay, shape plus, eh? you, you imagine the shape plus. Shape plus pun ada baffle. Baffle shape plus, kalau let's say yang with the flat, uh, surface dekat bawah tu, bottom plate tu, that one is unbaffled, we call it. But the one with baffle, uh, contohnya uh, shape pass tu dia akan ada macam, ada structure sikit kat bawah ni. Uh, I don't know how to draw it nicely but I hope that you get my point. Tapi kalau you tengok nanti shape pass dekat lab kan, dia ada lengkuk kat bawah tu. It's like a little, uh, it's, it's, it's not even entirely at the bottom. So that is what we call baffle shape plus. So the purpose is also to uh, facilitate the mixing. Kalau mixing kat sini, dia akan really macam very, dia macam in terms of the flow tu, dia tak, dia akan macam sekunder macam tu je. Tapi kalau ada baffle ni, dia akan macam, uh, you know, it will actually um, improve the mixing lah. I don't know how to explain in a more, uh, it's in a much easier way. Tapi itu, that is something to do with the engineering lah. Engineering the flow of the dynamics of the fluid inside. Okay. Uh, so that is the purpose of baffle. Kalau baffle dalam director, ada yang besi tu. Kalau untuk shape plus, uh, it is um, yang ada lekuk tu. That is baffle. Okay. Uh, did I answer your question? Okay, thanks. Any more questions before I we go into the quiz uh, to discuss the questions on, for the quiz? We go directly to the quiz, huh? Because I think it's already one o'clock now. Okay, guys, uh, you guys have checked your quiz, right? Marks the results. Uh, uh, I forgot to share the next one. Okay. Can you see the word file here? Can? Yes, okay. Yes, can. Okay, thank you. Right, quiz, huh? uh, this is just to discuss why the answer is so and so. Okay, the first question. Uh, Gram-negative bacteria when fed with glucose will produce similar amount of energy through similar metabolic pathway. The answer is false because... Uh, Different types of bacteria organism will produce different. Lah. Dia tak semua sama. I mean, this statement it says that all the gram-negative bacteria ni bila when fed with glucose will produce similar amount of energy, which is incorrect lah. Yeah. It it should it is a different uh, organism will have their own metabolic pathway. That is the point. Okay. 
Sampling during any fermentations should be carried out during the exponential phase of the cell growth only. The answer is false because it should be carried out throughout all the phases in order for you to get the growth curve young at the leg phase, milk phase, stationary phase, death phase, you are actually um, taking the samples and you analyze the samples like uh, measurement uh, of the absorbance. Eh? Uh, so you have to sample throughout the entire period of fermentation, which is the whole phases, not just during the exponential phase. Eh? Sampling is for you to analyze the growth in order for you to know whether or not your cells are growing, whether or not it follows the typical cell growth profile. Okay. Uh, third question, absorbent measurement is suitable for monitoring the growth of the following microorganisms, except, okay, so different, each of these represent different uh, type of organism. As Tertia coli is a bacteria, Bacillus is a uh, bacteria, uh, Aspergillus flavus is a fungus, Pichia pasteuris is a yeast. Okay, uh, so absorbance measurement is a way how you uh, measure the growth of the cells. Uh, it's one of the methods, it's not the only method. Uh, and absorbance measurement is only suitable for uh, cell suspension that are not filamentous. Uh, so uh, not filamentous or individual cells are like bacteria. Bacteria, uh, Escherichia coli, Bacillus boleh lah, actually, because you don't have problems. Uh, Pika also not really a problem. You can still measure the absorbance using, uh, you can still um, measure the growth using absorbance measurement, but not for Aspergillus flavus because Aspergillus flavus is a fungus. Uh, in this case, you have to understand that uh, absorbance measurement ni hanya sesuai untuk uh, those that uh, have ni lah yang that do not aggregate. For aspergillus flavus, the nature, I think we studied about the nature of the cells in the first lecture. The nature of the fungi, fungi in general, they are filamentous. So how you measure the growth, uh, you cannot use absorbance measurement, but you have to count the cells using cytometer, right? And you observe under the microscope. Uh, that one. And also you can Indirect method is you can use, uh, you can measure this dry cell weight. Uh, so you take the samples, you dry the cell, uh, you dry the cells, right? And then you measure the uh, the weight of the cells on the filter paper or on the membrane. I think this, that is one of the methods for SDS feathers, apart from the hemocytometer for calculating the number of the fungus. Eh? Okay. Uh, but not absorbance measurement. Question four, uh, the change of fructose over time can be correlated with the growth of bacterium X. You are given this situation. Uh, okay, you read by yourself here. Yeah? Uh, it carries an amylase gene packed with fructose incubated for 24 hours. Uh, during the 24 hour incubation, Ahmed only monitored the change of fructose over time. Okay, fructose is the substrate, is the food, right, uh, given to this bacterium X. Uh, the change of fructose over time can be correlated with the growth of bacterium X. The answer is true. You need to keep a study based on indirect method then. We can uh, estimate the growth of the cells or the uh, organisms based on the consumption of the substrate. Uh, in this case, fructose is the substrate. So if the substrate is consumed, it means that the uh, bacteria or the, the organism that we cultivate is growing, right? That is indirect method. So the answer is true. It can be cultivated. Uh, concentration of fructose is inversely proportional to the growth of bacterium X. Okay, the answer is true. The reason is why, the reason, uh, you have you guys done the practical one report? Have you plot the graph? Oh, yeah, pasal yeah, substrate tu. Sekejap. This one inversely proportional is, uh, proportional is, it it yeah. comes together lah. If let's say the growth is increasing, uh, whatever, when you say it's proportional, it's also increasing. Let's say the product is increasing. That is proportional. Inversely proportional is something opposite. Meaning to say that if the, fructose you provide in the beginning like 20 gram per liter right 
uh, throughout that 24 hours, it should be reducing, right? 20 gram per liter, kalau dia diguna untuk buy the bacteria for growing and for producing the product, eh? dia akan reducing throughout the time. It's not going to be increasing, right? So uh, the fructose will be decreasing and the growth, if there is a growth, it will be increasing. So of course the substrate, whatever the substrate, uh, not just uh, in this case is fructose, but substrate in general is inversely proportional to the growth of the organism that we grow. Okay, so the answer is true. You should understand what inversely proportional means. Perhaps you will use this kind of terms when you describe the graph uh, or the results. You should know what it means. Eh? Name the target product of fermentation by bacterium X. Uh, it's in the answer. It's actually in the uh, description here, which is amylase. Why it is amylase? Why I see some of your answers are ethanol, uh, macam I didn't know what How you get the answers? I mean, I don't go far. This is bacterium X. Okay, it is genetically modified, right? It carries amylase gene. So, of course, when it is modified, it must have certain gene of interest that you put into it, right? And you want the reason why you put it because you want that gene to be expressed, and of course, you want to get the products. So, amylase gene. Dia adalah gene, tapi yang produknya adalah amylase lah, kan? Tidak. So, amylase is the product. Yeah? So, when you read uh, articles, uh, not just in this quiz, you should know actually apa yang the product, apa yang organism. When you answer, some of you answers bacillus. Uh, I'm quite surprised lah, why, why you answer bacillus? Bacillus is an organism, it's not a product. It's not even mentioned here. Uh, some of you answer ethanol. Ethanol? Which one ethanol club? So ethanol, perhaps you are confused with the practical question. Oh. So, but this one is does it, it has nothing to do with ethanol. So you have to focus here. So you need so now you need amylase. Huh? Yeah, uh, tak semestinya. Uh, yeah, it, it depends on the case. Lah. Kalau you are talking about saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, like in the practical question, of course, the product is bioethanol, but it's not bioethanol in all fermentations. Um, uh, fermentation is a general process. The products can be varied. Okay. Uh, so the target product, the main product here is amylase. Yeah? Okay. Agricultural residues that have residual starch cannot be used as a medium for cultivating microorganisms since the content of the residues is complex and may have impurities. Uh, it is false because uh, we can use the we can use the agricultural residues like uh, for example the sago waste because they have the starch. Uh, it's not a problem even though they are impurities because those impurities can be uh, discarded uh, after the fermentation. There is a, a a stage called downstream processing where the products are purified from any impurities. So. The answer here is false. It can be used. It can be used even though it uh, it might have impurities at the end. Okay, and in fact, the research the research in the past twenty years are going into using agricultural waste as a substrate as a feedstock eh, in order to reduce the cost of the fermentation. Okay, question number eight: Cultivation media used for feedstock pastures. Any questions so far? You guys can see what I explained here, right? Otherwise, boleh, eh? Any questions so far from question one to question seven? Any, anything you might want to add, perhaps? What you want to, you, are, you want to ask? Guys? No, doctor. No, okay. Uh, question number eight, cultivation media used for PKR. Pasteurase are similar to, uh, for saccharomyces cerevisiae since both organism, microorganisms are yeast, hence their nutrient requirements are similar. The answer is false because even though it's, um, they are of the same type of organism, they have different requirements. Eh? Even though, like, for example, you, uh, you are a girl, right? Uh, your friend is also a girl. Both of you are girls but not necessarily you require same requirement of nutrients. Yeah. Maybe you need more certain 
uh, nutrients compared to other person. Yep. So same thing goes to microorganisms or organisms in general. Picture and saccharomyces are they have different requirements because every type of the organism they have their own specific requirements. Okay, question number nine. Lim wants to run E. coli fermentation instead in director. The total volume is five liter. We tell me what is the maximum working volume. So here I said maximum working volume. So working volume, the idle one should be 80%, right? 80% of the total volume of the platform. So the bioreactor 5 liter here is the total volume of the bioreactor system. So the working volume should be 80%, maximum 80%. So 80% out of 5 liter is 4 liter. But it cannot be, I mean, if you run like 3.5, also fine. That's why I put here maximum working volume. Uh, if I say working volume, anything below 4 liter can be accepted. Lah. But in this case, it's maximum working volume is 4 liter because it's 80%. It cannot be 90%. It cannot be 5 liter. Okay. Uh, number 10, shear force greater in stirred tank by rate depends on the following aspect except agitation speed, yes. Type of impeller, yes. Baffles, yes. Type of motor, no. Because motor is the one that is attached on the agitator. It doesn't have, yeah, of course it controls the agitation. But uh, how you control the agitation, it depends on the speed. It, it, it's just a, it's just a switch, a switch like I can say. It, it has nothing to do with the things inside. Okay, What uh, determines uh, the things inside is all this stuff. The agitator speed, yeah. If let's say the speed is high, then the shear force is high, is is uh is great, yeah. And then the type of impeller, of course, yeah, the baffles, as I mentioned just now. I think this answers what I explained just now. Maybe you, you asked me because of this question. Okay, question number eleven. Mechanical deformer is suitable to be used for eliminating form in mammalian cell cultures. The answer is false because. Mechanical deformer is uh, is the one that is attached to the agitator, okay? And uh, we discussed about it last week, last two weeks, that uh, it can be used for, uh, it can be efficiently be used for high uh, speed, right? Uh, so mammalian cell cultures, uh, they are sensitive to shear, so you cannot operate high speed for uh, Mammalian cell cultures. So apparently, mechanical deformer ni dia hanya guna untuk high speed punya system. So apparently, we cannot use mechanical deformer for mammalian cell cultures. Yeah. Mechanical deformer perhaps can be used for uh, microbial cultures, which can be operated, which can be cultivated at high speed. Okay. Perhaps for mammalian cell cultures, in order to eliminate the form, you need to add certain types of reagents or chemicals. Question number 12, the soft oxygen in any cultures in bioreactors should be equal to the total oxygen supply to the cultures. So now, dissolved oxygen, total oxygen is different. And total oxygen is the amount of um, amount of uh, oxygen supply, okay? Uh, but dissolved oxygen is the oxygen that is dissolved in the liquid, in the culture. Because culture here, we are talking about liquid cultures. So dissolved oxygen are oxygen that are dissolved in the liquid. We know that for the oxygen to be dissolved in the liquid, uh, they, they are actually a few hurdles or few obstacles for the oxygen to be dissolved, right? So meaning to say that if you, um, if you are supplying a certain amount of oxygen, not all of the oxygen will be dissolved. It depends on many factors inside the culture as well, okay? So uh, by nature, actually, we know that uh, the total oxygen will not be entirely similar to what will be dissolved in the cultures in the liquid. Okay, so this is wrong. It should be equal. It's not. Should be equal. It should. Uh, it's normally less than. It should be less than. It, it can't be equal to because not all oxygen will be dissolved. Okay, so the answer here is false. Okay, any question? Any question, guys? I think uh, the time is already like two hours already. Okay. If you have any question uh, about the quiz, uh, you can email me perhaps. Yeah. 
or anything on the lecture today? Okay. Um, right. So if there's no question, then uh, we can disperse here. Right. Okay. Uh, attendance. Yeah. Tadi ada yang tak sempat pun attendance. This one is group two. Group two. Group two. Group one after this. Group two. Any more group two? Yang lain tu manual kan? Ada yang tadi yang message I manual. Uh, okay, group one. Group one. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, if you guys have scanned your attendance, uh, you may leave if you want. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. So next week we are not going to uh, next week. Oh yeah, next week we are going to have a visual practical tool, right? Uh, as outlined in the plan. So I will post the details of the practical tool on Elip and on Telegram. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, for your patience. Okay, right? Okay, have a nice day. Stay safe. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome.